Can you hear me? So, good afternoon. My name is Ginger Housefield, and I am thrilled to be here today. Just wanted to do a quick introduction that I'm a biology student here at Salt Lake Community College and just about finished up with my associates of a science degree. And I'm excited to go ahead and show you some data as well as some pictures that I've been gathering from an independent research project I've been conducting. And I'm essentially exploring the presence of microorganisms in unwashed reusable water bottles. So let's just have a raise of hands in the audience who actually uses a water bottle on a typical basis. Well, there's quite a few hands. And they might look something like this. Maybe they're reusable, maybe they're disposable, but you still reuse them. Well, considering their continued use, how often do you actually wash that water bottle? You know, maybe it's every couple of days, once a week, I don't know, you can't remember. Well, <laughs> how about the smell? I know there's been times when I've taken a whiff of my water bottle and it's like, oh, I need to wash that thing. And I, perhaps some of you have had that same experience, and it's essentially been my motivation for this research, because my objective is to find out what microorganisms make that smell and make that awful taste. So I was excited to take biology too last semester, and within the lab portion, we got to study cyanobacteria. And within cyanobacteria, some of those species actually cause disagreeable tastes, odors, and smells as well as colors. And I thought, when I was looking at these critters under the microscope, wow, what if cyanobacteria is what's in my water bottle, causing them to have that foul odor? So I discussed this hypothesis with my professor, Dr. Melissa Hardy, and she encouraged me to research the idea. So I went home and designed an experiment in which I would be drinking from water bottles for a week without washing them, taking water samples, and then seeing if anything grew. <laughs> so. To start this process, I went ahead and bought four reusable, identical bottles, took them home, washed them, and brought them to campus, and actually utilized this drinking fountain, which is on the second floor of the student center, to fill them not just the first time, but every time I needed to refill them throughout that week. Now, I chose a single source of water um, with the intention to eliminate any unnecessary variables. It was a bit of an inconvenience to come over here multiple times a day to fill them up. Um, but I did it for a week, and I carried the bottles with me um, any, essentially everywhere I went, whether it was in the gym, at home, around campus. And I devised this color code system in which I could keep track of which bottles were which. So the gold bottle was my control. I never drank from it. And then I had three test replicates, um, which I continued to drink from and refill throughout that week. Now, I tried my best to expose all three test bottles to the same environmental factors. So when I drank from one of the test bottles, I, I would proceed and drink from the other two within the same minute or so with hopes of having whatever in and around my mouth um, go into those second bottles as well. So now I'd like to just share with you the methods that I used to actually collect these water samples. I used um, the laboratory within the SI building um, I sanitized the counter and used sterile equipment and supplies to just take a tiny amount, one milliliter of water from this bottle, which is about 400 milliliters, so just a fraction of water from each of the bottles and apply that to a sterile Petri dish or plate. And the plates contain nutrient auger. Um, and I decided to take water samples not every day, but on days one, three, five, seven, and 10. And although I stopped drinking after a week, which was well beyond my personal comfort level, I still chose to do a sampling on day 10. Because I know some people in my life who drink from their water, water bottle all week, seal it up, sits on the counter over the weekend, or it's rolling around in the back of their car, and the next time they want to use it, they just grab it and go without second thought, and certainly without washing it. So the, dime, the data that I collected on day 10 is for those people. Um, and of course, I had to go ahead and seal up each of the Petri dishes as soon as I added the water, and they just, they just cultured or grew at room temperature. And throughout the experiment, I needed to look at all my plates and count the number of colonies, and I recorded that all in my laboratory notebook. Um, and I collected a lot of data, so I went ahead and comprised that all into this following chart, which is going to indicate the number of microorganism colonies for every single sample that I took and at a time point for each of them at four days of growth at nutrient auger at, um, at room temperature. 
So you'll see from the samples I took on day one, all four plates actually had growth, um, which was a bit surprising to me. And then day three, I had the same type of results. Now day five, the colony counts actually went into the hundreds. And by day seven, into the thousands. And by day 10, the colony counts were literally off the chart. So if you just take a look at days one and three, you can see that both that all four plates, including the, the control plate, had some growth. And I'm attributing that to my learning curve of aseptic or sterile techniques. So I must have had some sort of contaminants um, on each of the plates. But that learning technique must have um, kicked in because on days five, seven, and 10, the gold petri dishes didn't have any growth at all. And uh, just another side note, um, you may notice that there's not all the test replicates for day seven, and that's simply because when I went into the, the laboratory that day, I only had three sterile plates to work with, and I, of course, needed to, to still test the control bottle, which didn't have any growth, and then the other two are just from um, just the random selection of the test replicates for that day. So now this is what you see in the chart. Now you get to see what I actually looked at on the plates. So this is from four days of growth on the sample, on um, one of the samples from, from day one. There's 15 tiny colonies on this plate. You probably can't see them, they're about a millimeter in diameter. But by the samples from day three, they were much larger, definitely evident. Day five, mm, there was a lot. And then again, just to reiterate, this is five days of drinking from these water bottles without washing them, taking just a milliliter of water on putting them each on a plate. And this is the number of colonies that grew with just, in, just within two days of growth in this, in this case. So day seven, this is just one of the plates. Each one of those black dots, I literally put with a Sharpie pencil or a Sharpie pen, there's more than 1,800 colonies. And it freaks me out that I was still drinking from them at this point, but for the sake of science, I was. And then here's all the plates um, for 10. So you can maybe not even tell, but all of the colonies are merged together into what microbiologists refer to as a lawn. And a key thing to note is that the gold plates didn't have any colonies on them at, at all. So getting all these colony counts was certainly exciting, but I also wanted to get additional data, like what is the smell of these water bottles? What do they look like under the microscope? And what can their DNA tell me? So I'm pretty biased when it comes to stinky water bottles. So to get some unbiased perspective, I enlisted the help of several of my peers within my biology lab class. I asked if any of them would be willing to smell my water bottles. And six volunteers kind of said, sure. So I went ahead and, and uh, conducted three double-blind smell tests throughout my experiment. And during these tests, neither I nor the students knew which bottles were which visually. And they went around and smelled, took a big whiff of each bottle and wrote down comments of what they thought. And I went ahead and collected the comments from my third smell test, which was done on day 10. Saw how many colonies grew on day 10. So you can imagine, maybe they smelled bad. Well, they absolutely did. So this is collecting a, just a summary of their, of their comments. So five of, the set, five of the six respondents indicated there was absolutely no smell whatsoever on the gold control plate or the gold control bottle. Whereas there was a huge consistent consensus for all three test bottles that they had a definite foul odor. And I thank each and every one of those volunteers for, for collecting this data for me. Something that I thought was really interesting, nearly half of the respondents' comments included the words feet or wet socks, which was really surprising. I've always referred to my stinky water bottles of, as like fishbowl smell, which was another reason why I thought cyanobacteria would be the culprit. But when I saw the word feet, it really made me wonder, like, wow, maybe this is something else. So this is just an example of their comment cards. They write, smells like feet, cheesy and gross, slight feet smell, the gold, when the gold was water, which is good. And of course, they didn't have these stickers on the comment card when they were actually writing, writing out the comments. And then this one just indicates wet socks, moldy cheese, clothes that aren't dried properly, and then nothing for the water. So the next step I wanted to do was actually do a visual inspection of all the plates that I took throughout the experiment, because I wanted to go ahead and pre prepare some microscope slides that I could do some visual inspections at a later time. 
So I went ahead and made sure I picked some of the red colonies, the cream colonies, and so forth, and prepared several slides. But the biggest thing I wanted to do was figure out what their DNA can tell me. So in cellular biology, we got to learn that when you take a specimen, isolate their DNA, amplify it, and then obtain a sequence of that DNA, you can use this online search tool called BLAST to see what other organisms have a similar genome and then conclusively identify what critters are in your water bottle. This is what I want to do. This is my end goal. So to start that, I went ahead and selected representative colonies. And these colonies ranged in colors. So red, orange, white, cream, bright yellow. Some of them were crusty. Some of them were goopy. And I went ahead and took a tiny bit of portion of each of these colonies and put them in their own little microtubule, microtube. Stored them in this awesome tray labeled do not discard student experiment. However, for some reason, they still got thrown away, which was the end of my DNA analysis. But I also took all those, prepared all those microscope slides. So I was still able to do some inspection visually. And this is an example here on your right of an orange colony, and on your left, the cream colony. Now these cell types absolutely do not look like cyanobacteria. And furthermore, cyanobacteria is photosynthetic, which means it has a, a chlorophyll A pigment that's why ponds have that green, slimy scum. Well, thankfully, none of my unwashed water bottles got the pond scum. And as you saw, none of those colonies turned green. So I feel confident in rejecting my hypothesis. And due to this rejection of my hypothesis and the fact that I didn't get to do my DNA analysis, I felt motivated to start an experiment in February, as if I had time. But I started it anyway. And this time, I used the data from my first experiment to go ahead and modify my hypothesis. So I now think that the foul odor in my water bottles is caused by the same organisms that are present on my feet. And of course, I needed to test this. So I went ahead and took a swab and wiped the bottom surface of my foot in between each of my toes. And I wiped this on this nutrient auger plate. And within three days of growth, to my delight and disgust, the colonies that grew looks strikingly similar in color, shape, and size to the colonies that grew from the water bottles of my first experiment. Furthermore, I got to compare th the microscopic view. So here on the right is an orange colony from the water bottles, and on the left is an orange colony from that foot sample that you just saw. So from visual inspection alone, it does seem to be a plausible hypothesis. But of course, that's not good enough for me. I want to do the DNA analysis. So I went ahead and collected 15 more samples of both the water bottle samples from this experiment as well as that foot plate. And these are now in storage, but in the Inova Bio Laboratory. I've been working within <laughs> that laboratory, which is part of the biotechnology department, and I'm so thrilled to get some hands-on experience and training. I'm working under the supervision of their director, Dr. Uh, Mary Nelson and one of their awesome interns named Cameron Aiken. And I'm learning all these techniques within the laboratory and learning the protocols necessary to do what's called PCR, or polymerase chain reaction. It's the DNA amplification process that will ultimately give me the DNA sequences that I can put in that BLAST search tool. Because my end goal is to find out what microorganisms are in my water bottle, what microorganisms are on my feet, and are they the same thing? So with that, I'm really looking forward to crossing all these goals off in the coming weeks and over the summer. And I wouldn't have been able to do this without the assistance and, and support from three very important professors of mine. I just want to give special recognition to Melissa Harvey, Mary Nelson, and Kathy Bell for the vast amount of information that they've shared with me to help me understand these processes. And at this time, I'd be happy to take any questions you might have. I have questions for you if you don't have one for me. Kristen. That's a great question. In case you didn't hear, Kristen asked, um, was I wearing flip-flops or chacos, which is what I'd be wearing, um, or was I wearing shoes with sweaty socks? So I'd actually worked out for an hour with my running shoes on, took my sock off while my sock was still sweaty, and just did a little swap. 
Question. So that's an excellent question. He was, I chose, he was, his question is whether perhaps a metal bottle would have a similar impact. Um, I was curious about that as well. And when I designed this experiment, as Dr. Hardy could attest, I wanted to test all these sorts of bottles because those bottles in the picture at the beginning were all the type of bottles that I use in my house, including metal bottles. But with the, with the idea that it was cyanobacteria, I wanted to make them transparent so sunlight could come in. But I, I can attest, and my husband probably could too, that he always uses a metal water bottle with the same funk. Like if you don't wash your water bottle, you're going to get the same smell. So I, I can attest to that. Um, but that leads me to, I'm, I'm quite, quite wanting to do a third experiment so I can explore some more variables. Um, so that's a good question because I think trying this out on different water bottles would be really fun. Because I've now tried it out twice on these transparent ones. Doing it on various types of water bottles would be interesting as well. So that was a great question. Did everyone hear that, or would you like me to repeat some of it? Essentially, she wants me to know, she wants my opinion of whether we should eradicate these little critters or if they are good for our immunity. Um, I haven't yet had the opportunity to take microbiology, but I'm thrilled to be able to do that soon. Um, from what I've read, our body inside and out is covered with these microbes, and we wouldn't be here today without them. And very few bacteria cells or bacteria are pathogenic or harmful to humans. Um, so I'm not wanting to eradicate this, but my take on like washing your water bottle is we live in a state, a city, a country that has clean water and a lot of the world doesn't. So based, of, based solely on laziness for not cleaning our water bottles, we're essentially drinking dirty water, which isn't necessary. Um, so it freaks me out personally, to not have a clean water bottle. Um, perhaps I've motivated some of you to wash your water bottles. I have at least six texts or emails from students and family members who I've shared this with have, who have been like, wow, I wash my water bottle more often. So maybe you will too. Um, and it, I, I don't have the knowledge regarding the eradication piece. I, I know that they're beneficial to us. Um, but it's more of a why drink dirty water when we have clean water in this country? And that's my take on that. Thanks for the question. Any others? All right, well, thank you all for being here today. I appreciate you, your attentiveness. <laughs>